Hi guys, welcome to Irish Philly Vlogs for another installment of Premier Division Team of the Week. Now remember guys, this is just my opinion. I've seen all six games. I uh, wouldn't do Team of the Week if I didn't see all six games. So uh, let me know down in the comments what your Team of the Week would be if you've seen the six games. Or any honourable mentions or any players I might have missed out that you could recommend uh, would be in contention for Team of the Week. So let's get straight into this. Now, the goalkeeper have gone for Mark McGinley of Finn Harps. Now, this is the second week he's got in. In fact, I think it's the second week in a row he's got in. Um, Finn Harps drew 0-0 away to Dundalk, which was a positive result, considering what happened Cork City at the weekend as well. McGinley, very solid in goal, commanding. He's not the tallest, but he's quite commanding goalkeeper. Um, made a few important saves, to be fair, particularly at the end of the first half where Dundalk piled on the pressure and McGinley made quite a few saves at that point. Very commanding, as I said. Uh, James Talbot just missed out. Um, the only reason he missed out, really, is because, you know, he conceded a goal, basically. Uh, very unlucky, really. He made a couple of important saves, too, and he saved the penalty. Now, to be fair, the penalty from Georgie Point was very weak. Um, my grandmother could have saved that one, to be honest. But good to see Talbot back in form. But McGinley, because of the clean sheet, I suppose, and the importance it is to Harps, in the context of the season, is the number one goalkeeper this week. So we're, for right back, I've gone for Andy Lyons, Bohemians. Andy Lyons put in a good display in Bohemians' 3-1 win against Shelburne at Tolka Park. Uh, got up and down the pitch, uh, dealt with Shelburne's attacks fairly well as well. Shelburne tended to attack more the right hand side, actually. One of the reasons may have been um, because Lyons was down that. He's kind of like, he's one of these players that does his job without any fuss, and he doesn't look spectacular at times, um, Lyons, but does the simple things and the basics very, very well, to be fair. Um, something that a lot of players can struggle to do, you know, in fairness. Rory Feely, same pass was close, I have to say. He was close to getting in for the second week in a row, actually, so he's starting to perform well for Pats as a right back, having played in a number of different positions throughout the season. But uh, Andy Lyons for me in at right back. Now centre back and went for Liam Scales and Shamrock Rovers. Liam put in a fantastic performance in Shamrock Rovers 4-0 win against Sligo Rovers at Tallis Stadium. Um, nearly flawless to be honest. He played as the third centre back, the left-hand side of centre back. He, he plays three roles at times. It's a strange one, but he, he often covers the left backs that get forward and does it brilliantly. Um, very good interceptor. He doesn't really have to tackle very often, but he's very good at actually intercepting play and reading the game. Steps up into midfield, joins the midfield, um, and does his job as a centre-back brilliantly as well. He did all those three things magnificently in the 3-0 win against... 4-0 uh, win, rather, against Liga Rovers. And uh, Liam Scales, I think this is the first time he's in Team of the Week, but very, very good footballer and deserves to be in. Now, centre-back number two, I went for Owen Toll at Derry City. Owen put in a very good performance in Derry City's 2-0 victory against Waterford FC over the weekend. Um, very elegant defender. Does his, A bit like Scales in that way. Does his job very, very well. Good in the air, but um, can bring the ball out of defence as well. Likes to stride forward with the ball, actually, into midfield. Um, pretty good on the ball in terms of when he's dribbling with the ball for centre-back as well. He can dribble out of situations, which he often does. Um, very, very good performance against Waterford. Um, just got in ahead of Dave Webster. I thought Webster put in a very good performance for Finn Harps against Dundalk and just about missed out. Um, so Toll basically gets in. Team of the week alongside Liam Scales, the centre-back, lads. Now, left-back went for Neil Ferrugia, Shamrock Rovers. I know I've said it before and that Shamrock Rovers don't play a system where they play left-backs, but they play left-wing-backs. Uh, Ferrugia got up and down. He's been playing very, very well for the last few weeks and actually been unlucky to miss out in the team of the week. Uh, because there's been some been brilliant performances actually at left back from players. But this week he gets in, deservedly so. He may have set up a goal as well. I can't actually remember. It feels like that long ago. I watched so many games this weekend. But um, put in a very good performance. Gets up and down that left wing. Has the energy and quality to do it. Good dribbling ability. Uh, improving defensively as well, I've noticed, over the last few weeks. And that shift he put in against Sligo was a very good one. Um, you could argue his final ball could improve. There's no doubt about that. But I thought his performance against Sligo Rovers was very good. And Ferruja gets in the team of the week this week.
Centre midfield was a difficult one because every week there seems to be very good players in centre midfield performing well. But the first player I went for was Conor McCormack. I've gone for a three-man centre midfield, by the way. Conor McCormack gets in because I thought he was a driving force in that midfield for uh, Derry City. Conor Clifford, I know, scored two penalties, but I think overall in his performance, McCormack was excellent, led by example for Derry City, drove the team forward, got tackles in, in, interceptions, a real leader, and he showed his leadership qualities in this game by performing on the pitch. Um, he's been up and down a little bit, I suppose, for Derry City since he signed, but you can see he's starting to settle into that midfield now. And for me, he's a mainstay and needs to play every week for Derry City. And I think his performance was critical in Derry City getting a very important win against Waterford over the weekend. So Conor McCormick, the first man in midfield. Second man in midfield is Chris Forrest for St. Patrick's Athletic. Again, last week was unlucky to miss out. This week he gets in. Didn't score this week, but a very good performance by him. At times he was unplayable in this game. Cork couldn't get near him. Uh, particularly in that first half when it was attack after attack, wave of attack from St. Pat's and the Cork goal. I suppose the one thing Forrest was missing was a goal. He had a couple of strikes from distance uh, that were saved or just went over the top. But his actual performance, he was dropping deep, getting on the ball, moving the ball quickly, receiving the ball again. Uh, getting the ball in dangerous areas, which I feel Forrest are doesn't do often enough for the ability he has, but he was getting the ball in dangerous areas and it, popping up in dangerous areas as well. He forced a save from McNulty as well, where he got into the box uh, after a pullback. I think it might have been Griffin or whatever, but uh, good signs for Pats, good signs for Forrester because um, last couple of weeks, Forrester's performances have improved and that might be because of uh, Pats' team structure has improved as well, which is always important. But uh, when Forrest is on his game, he's one of the best footballers in the league and he deserves to get in this week's Team of the Week. Now, the final player to get in central midfield, I'm laughing because it's Jack Byrne. This is the third week in a row. I'm almost looking for excuses not to put Jack Byrne in Team of the Week, and he's not giving me any excuses. It's ridiculous, but, you know, when you're good, you're good, as I say. Um, again, instrumental in that win against Sligo. He was actually carrying an injury, would you believe, in that game as well. I'm still very instrumental in that game against Sligo Rovers. That pass for Graham Burke for the second or third goal, fantastic. What a pass. What a pass. And he scored again, of course, as well. He's top scorer in the league, lads. Jack Byrne. For a player who gets the ball deep and makes things happen and keeps Shamrock Rovers ticking generally to be top scorer in the league is pretty impressive as well. And um, if you've seen him play at his best, you know, he just, last couple of weeks especially, I think he's brought everything, every facet of quality he has to that Shamrock Rovers midfield. And uh, I couldn't leave him out. Just cutting, guys. The wingers this week were actually easy for me. I went for Danny Grant to Bohemians. I mean, he got a hat-trick in the 3-1 win against Shelburne. What more can you want? You can't leave him out. Uh, overall, very good performance. Could have had a few more goals as well from Danny Grant. But uh, his quality of finishing came to the fore in this game. He's uh, obviously causing a lot of problems on that left wing particularly. Um, you know, his dribbling ability, his timing of runs in the, into the areas at the right time. And obviously, you know, he scores a hat-trick. What more can you say about Danny Grant? Absolutely brilliant performance. And he, he's won the wingers in Team of the Week. I couldn't leave out Grant who played left wing. Figura, Walter Figura played left wing for the majority of the game uh, for Derry City. Having said that, he's more of a floater left winger. He can play, he often turned up in the right in their win against Waterford. And he often turned up in the centre as well. He's a free roll sort of a player for me, but um, he gets in. I'm putting him in right wing because of that reason, and you can't leave him out. I think he put in a very good display against Waterford. Um, that little rainbow flick as well was brilliant as well. Uh, ended up getting a corner out of that, but um, his dribbling ability is fantastic. He's not the fastest player in the world. He's not slow, don't get me wrong, but when it comes to wingers, he's more of um, a creator, an inventor, and a prober. Um, let's say than a Danny Grant who's more of an out-and-out winger as such um, but he turns up everywhere and he turned up everywhere for Derry City against Waterford at the weekend and was vital in getting those three points and he's been quite consistent overall this season but the first time he's appeared in Team of the Week and he deserves it now the striker this week is Andre Wright and I was just trying to think there did Wright get in last week as well can't remember the top of my head but he's definitely got in twice in the Team of the Week so far um, how long does this guy have to be underrated for guys he didn't score against Shelburne but he played a part in all three goals his link up play with Grant was brilliant he set up Grant for two of the goals and the third goal came from a save from a shot um, 
by him and which Grant turned into the net. He's different to Dinny Corcoran. Dinny Corcoran is a fox in the box, but Grant drops deep, links up, and lets the Bowes wingers off and uh, make those runs in behind by pulling out. And he done that brilliantly against Shelburne, you know, the facet of, his, of that play. He's a striker as well. This is the point. He doesn't have to score to necessarily play well or perform. And um, I always like that in strikers as well. He's always in the game, keeps moving. Uh, so Andre Wright, for me, was a standout forward this week. So that's about it, guys. Please subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification button so you don't miss a video. And like the video if you like the content. And I'll see you again. Good luck now.